Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown Negation versus Disruption So in this video, I'm going to talk about negation, how it has changed with the latest ban list, and how disruption now is being promoted more by Konami. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so let's talk about negation. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Negation has been a constant thing, especially in the TCG, unlike uh, you know, whereas OCG, it's a bit more varied. But in TCG, mostly, we the playstyle of negation has been a constant thing in the meta scene, the competitive scene, and all forms of scenes, whether it's on the casual front, on every front. Negation was something that you could not escape in terms of its popularity and playstyle and all manners of things. But our latest ban list has shown something from TCG, and we have shown something that has not happened ever before. Did you just break the rules? Although I had speculated this, um, and I would said it in some other videos, where I would feel that Konami would hit our negate cards and we would move away from negation, to actually see it happen, um is quite amazing because even though i did say that i was a bit reluctant to believe that konami would actually do that because that would be something that would help uh the game in the whole this whole aspect of banning negation cards would be something that would help the game and they never usually focus on this even you can see in my latest video when i talk about hand increase it's really more tongue-in-cheek but more like just accepting the fact that we will never improve, we will never change, and all manners of things like that. But there does seem, now I can actually take um, what Kram is doing very seriously. If Rarity Collection was something I thought was them just dipping their toes, this latest ban list from Konami has shown me that they are really now serious, and now I'm looking at them, okay, okay, you're, you're serious now, you actually want to... Uh, you know, save this game. You actually are putting in some effort now to actually address the issues of this game. You're addressing one of the issues, possibly more. And the fact that I've seen in one of the latest sets, Infinite Forbidden, we're getting a retrain of Max C. Not only is it weaker than the original Max C, it's weaker, more balanced, and overall just a healthier way to limit special summoning. And I'm liking it. This looks to be that they, they are beginning to see the, the light and see the complaints about Maxi that has been uh, proliferated by the community so far at large. We're beginning to see that, I think, possibly, in the latest you know OCG ban list, maybe later on this year, we may see the banning of Maxi over there. And they may not have Maxi anymore as they may get a replacement. Who knows? Um, they may make that trend because it's very imperative that what happens in OCG will translate here. Their change will mean our change as well. The fact that this card is being released changes a lot. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Let's continue on with this matter. Alrighty then. And so as I continue on with this matter, we need to talk about one of the other things, which is disruption. Uh, disruption is something that is now being promoted heavily by Konami, as we're seeing these with the latest archetypes and the latest things that are coming out for Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Negation is there, but more so than not, we're starting to see that with Konami, when they're designing neg uh, neg negate cards, right, they're starting to have checks and balances on them. Right, They're starting to not just be placed everywhere and not just be generic so that every deck can use them. We're starting to see that gen generic stuff is locked to their homes, either in some form of locking, whether it's a type lock, an archetype lock, type lock, attribute lock, whatever it is. There's some kind of locking mechanism that is keeping these cards 
so that they are not abused so much. We're seeing an overall improvement of effects as a whole, a more healthy side of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I, and I definitely want this trend to continue, as this has been continuing, as this started, I would say, you know, last year in 2023, and I'd like this to continue on until from 2024, and to continue on this trend of just healthy effects, healthy gameplay. I'm all for healthy gameplay, healthy effects, because... If we are going to attract a new crowd, this game needs to change fundamentally. Um, I think we have hit, I think we have hit, obviously, the cap for changing um, the rules. Usually, the procedure for Yu-Gi-Oh! is every four years we get a mechanic change. And 2020 was the last time we had... We had something and so we're going 2024 and we're seeing a mechanic change that has sort of happened and i feel it started mostly in 2023 but 2024 is seeing this change all the more prevalent sure we're ha we're seeing advantage engines being produced more and more and more and we're seeing negation cards becoming a less and less of a thing the banning of Baron de Fleur and Barlowed Savage Dragon is huge for the TCG, as these have been the post child, child children for negation in decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. They just have not been. They do not promote any form of healthy Yu-Gi-Oh. They they always promote this break my board, break my style nonsense, right? That has been plaguing the game for so long. They've been an absolute cancer to healthy Yu-Gi-Oh. And with them gone, finally, there's a form of healing. The, one of the biggest issues that Yu-Gi-Oh has had for the longest time. These generic poster children of negation. And so it's glad to see that they're gone. Uh, maybe we'll hit Appaloosa, you know, as well in the coming future. And maybe in a future ban list. But overall, this is going to be great for the game as a whole. And... And all I want to say is that disruption takes the win here. Alrighty then. And there's something I also want to mention. There has been some changes and we've learned of some new news on the Yu-Gi-Oh! front. And this is something to do with dis uh, disruption as well. It's to do with the new sort of hand trap that is coming in Infinite Forbidden, which should come out for us in the NAWCQ, that would be around July, July time. That's when the set will come out in Infinite Forbidden. Anyways, there's a card that has been rumored to come out called Mulchi Mummy, and essentially it's a more balanced version of Max C. But before we talk about why this card could be the saving grace for the game itself, Let's go over and talk about Maxi, why it's banned in the TCG, and why OCG still have it, and why in every single avenue of Yu-Gi-Oh! on a formal setting, Maxi is still legal. Whether it's Master Duel on OCG, Maxi is still legal. So, what is the effect of Maxi? Maxi's effect is relatively simple. Its effect is, is that when your opponent special summons a monster, draw one card. There is no limit. This effect is essentially just infinite, and you can keep on drawing as long as your opponent special summons a monster, right? Absolutely busted, absolutely broken. One of the reasons why in TCG it got banned, and in OCG has never been banned and remained in the game ever since. Okay? So, let's go over and talk about the new hand trap that is coming out, which we, which we are dubbing it as a community mini maxi. It's called Mulchimami Purelia, and it has the following effect. With an attack stat of 100 and a defense of 600, it's a level 4 water aqua effect monster with the following effect. During the turn you activate this card's effect, you can only, acti you can only activate one Mulchimami's monster effect, not counting this card's. 
One, if you control no cards, quick effect, you can discard this card, apply these effects for the rest of this turn. Each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster from the hand, immediately draw one card. During the end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the sum of your opponent, your opponent controls plus six, shuffle random cards from your hand until it's equal to that sum. Okay, so we have uh, quite a lot to break down here. So what does this do for the game? Well, first of all, with these cards existing, there is a strong inclination, and we are thinking over here in TCG, that OCG might do, might do the honors and ban Maxi, finally. Are you serious? And we might have a balanced, they might have a balanced version. And we may see this coming into the TCG. As, obviously, this was coming to the TCG this year, but we may see this be applied in the mobile, in the um, online version of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. You need to get a life as soon as possible. So what does Multimami Purelia do for Yu-Gi-Oh! First of all, it allows us to keep combo in check and it'll, it's a going second card, but it is much more balanced than Maxi and can only be activated if you control new cards. So everything about it is absolutely fantastic. It is balanced in all aspects and everything that it's supposed to be. Remember, Maxi is a card that was designed with a sole purpose. The intention of, behind Maxi is to sort of keep, to have a, to have a system in check, to keep combo in check. Just special summoning, just monsters, just for free, being able to just, because we don't have a resource system in Yu-Gi-Oh! So Maxi was, is, was meant to, with the sole intent, to keep combo, to keep special summoning in check, so it doesn't go crazy right but Facts. completely it's completely left the mark and i we do feel that we it needed we do feel we we needed something to improve that we needed just something else and multi-mami purelia is exactly that it fulfills the quotas fulfills everything that a going second card needs to fulfill is it a card that you can that will beat every deck absolutely not but that's not the point it's not meant to beat every single deck is just meant to beat those decks that are a bit problematic that go a bit crazy especially ones with special because it only because it can uh, it only applies to normal or special summons and only from the hand any any special summoning from the graveyard or from the extra deck or from the banish zone or as we now call it officially banishment konami calls it banishment guess what happens now will not trigger malchi mami so, that's another thing to take note of. Okay, so let's talk about the overall conclusion. Well, when we talk about negate, neg negation versus disruption, one of the big major things that has changed now is that disruption is being more heavily promoted by Konami. The design philosophy has changed. And definitely we've hit the play mark for mechanical change as we usually have a mechanical change in the game every four years konami implements something new towards the game and indeed this year as like clockwork the last time was in 2020 2024 has come and we're seeing it in summertime with this new change the new change the new pivotal card is multimami purelia multimami when we had a similar card to Multimami, which was Max C, that changed the game forever. Max C was the card at the time of its release, changed Yu-Gi-Oh to being more fast paced. The game became more fast paced. The game became more ridiculous. And after that point was a pivoting point for the game, as it just became more toxic than ever before. But are we going to see the inverse? I believe we are. When we look at Multimami Purelia, as I've explained to you its effect earlier in this video, we notice some changes. It is much more balanced. It is much more nuanced. And it does what it's supposed to do. Keep special summoning in check. 
right? It's not for every deck and it's not meant to be against every single archetype or every single deck, but it's just meant to keep those um, archetypes or combo, combo decks that just go slightly out of control, keep them in slight check. It promotes healthy game states that we like to see in Yu-Gi-Oh! Allowing just back and forth gameplay and back and forth thought. How do we use this card? Do we use it in turn one? Do we shotgun it? Do we not shotgun it? Um, are we going to use it against branded or not? Are we going to use it against whatever? All these sort of things. We're asking the right questions. We're not just blindly activating a card and knowing that we're going to win. We have to use our brains and utilize this card to the best of our abilities. And that to me is showing great uh, card design and great innovation for the game going forward. Am I excited about Yu-Gi-Oh? Absolutely. And I think this card I had put basically with Yu-Gi-Oh, this year was, uh, was really rough. And I think I was thinking about really leaving this game. And I still do feel about leaving this game just competitively wise and just maybe just getting rarity collection and that's it. Now, am I still going to think about, you know... Playing this game like competitively? Absolutely not. I feel it's it's not worth it. But I will still cover this game as I still love this game. But leaving that aside and my worries aside and my feelings aside for the game for Yu-Gi-Oh! Point still stands. This card is very good for Yu-Gi-Oh! This card promotes healthy gameplay. This card promotes healthy mindsets. And so far, this year has been absolutely fantastic from Konami in terms of the attitude towards the game, right? We've had communication from Konami for the first time when it comes to, um, to uh, the ban list and why it was released when it was released. We had communication, guys. We had communication, we never have have had communication with Konami for since like forever. So loads of changes, loads of surprises we're getting from Konami this year, especially with the ban list, with the attitude towards the game, and with just everything involved. Things are finally looking they're going in the right direction, right? Where we do joke around as players and as a community, we do joke around and say that, you know, we don't expect things to change and there are money and there are business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this year has, has really, honestly, I've actually seen an actual massive change, right? In every single front, things are really changing and they're changing quite rapidly, especially. So that's all I've got to say, really about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.